So you play football? I play football. I want to ask you a question. Okay. There's a lot of pain involved in football. Yes, and a lot of pain medication involved too. So <laughs> why do you do it? Why do I do it? That's a good question. But I do it because I have, I have a lot of fun. I have a lot of fun and there's just, I don't know how you would understand this, but there's something about the feeling you get when you knock another man down. Can you understand where I'm coming from? <laughs> getting knocked down and getting back up. The comeback player of the year, Teddy Bruschi, today on NFL Films Presents. Why does Teddy Bruschi play football? Why does Teddy Bruschi still play football? Even Teddy Bruschi might have a tough time answering those questions. But everything you need to know about him and his passion for the game can be seen in this play from November. Even when his world is turned upside down, he continues to fight. What's your greatest asset as a, as a player? My instincts. My instincts. Back to throw McNabb. Steps. Fires. Pick off Teddy Bruschi. He will walk into the end zone. Touchdown. You know, realizing where the ball is going to be before it is. Picked off by Teddy Bruschi at the 20, at the 15, the 10, the 5, and he's in. He's touchdown. There's a lot of times a coach will ask me, would you see, how'd you do this or how'd you do that? And it's like, you know, I just sort of just felt it. He's been the one finding the ball at the bottom of the pile. He'll slap and punch. Back to throw Fiedler on first down. Fire. Intercepted. Touchdown. Teddy Bruschi. <laughs> Bruschi not only has been at the center of big plays, but also at the center of post-game celebrations in the Patriots locker room. <laughs> How we feel about another 14? After winning the AFC Championship in January. It's what we came for and what's we go and what's we going home with. Teddy Bruschi, the man. That's three. That's three. three times in the last four years, Bruschi has hoisted and hugged Lombardi trophies and his children. Embracing both the joys of football and fatherhood. After celebrating Super Bowl 39 with his family, the party continued back in New England. And after the parade, Teddy flew to Hawaii to play in his first Pro Bowl the next Sunday. With his grueling season finally over, he returned home to spend time with his family. We were happy as could be and happy to have him home. You know, we had our our Valentine's dinner, went to bed. Woke up with just a numbing sensation on my left, on my le left side of my body, my left arm, my left leg, and a severe headache. Thought his arm was asleep, really. Didn't think much of it. I mean, the way we are as professional athletes, you know, I'm okay, let's just sleep it off. <laughs> let's just sleep it off. So I woke up, I wake up late around 10 a.m. and the symptoms are still there and I just can't explain it. My wife, my wife doesn't know what's going on. And all of a sudden, my son walks in the room from the left to the right and uh, I hear him coming, but I can't see him coming. So all of a sudden, my oldest son, Teddy, TJ, we call him TJ, he just flashes on the right side of my face because I've lost vision in both left sides of my eye. And so he flashes up on the right side. I look to my wife and I say, call 911. Hi, I need an ambulance. Take my husband to Mass General. What's the Mass General? What's the problem? Uh, he's having blurred vision, numbness on the right side of his body. The ambulance came and picked me up, rushed us down to Mass General. My now neurologist, neurologist came up to me, put his hand on my shoulder, told me, Teddy, you've had a stroke. And I looked at him, <laughs> I saw him a little blurry, but I knew my ears were working. I said, what did you say? My ears are working fine. What did you just tell me? He said, you've had a mild stroke. I should have got him here sooner. <laughs> that was the first thing that went through, through my mind was, boy, we had no idea what we were dealing with. 
and we slept it off for four hours. We really didn't know the magnitude of what was going on, and I just felt uneducated, and I felt like I wish I would have gotten him sooner. But um, fortunately, wouldn't have changed a thing. I'm 32 years old. I mean, in the peak of my career, I've just come off my best year professionally that I've ever had, win the Super Bowl, Pro Bowl, and all of a sudden, here I am, I can't see and I can barely walk. When you're laying in the hospital, what's going through your mind in a situation like that? I mean, I can't imagine, you know, when, when something like that happens, are you thinking about, am I going to live? Am I going to die? And what's going to happen to my kids? How many more years do I have left? You know, the, this, is, this is all that, that I'm thinking about. So I'm just going a million miles an hour. And, I'm, and, and football right now, actually, at this point, is, is at the back of my mind. I was done. I, th I thought I was done. I'm done. I can't see, I can't walk, I'm finished. Was there ever a moment where the doctor said, Teddy, you've had a stroke and you're never gonna play football again? You know, there wasn't, and I don't think, I, I think they might have did that because maybe they were afraid <laughs> of, coming up, of coming up to me and telling me that, because that's, that's not what I wanted to hear. You think the doctors might have thought that, but they didn't want to tell you? I think so. No, they were very careful about not saying that, but in the beginning, I think Teddy and I knew that. In the beginning, early on, it wasn't even a question. Um, so you just assumed his career was over? Absolutely. Bruski was released from the hospital on February 18th. About a month later, he underwent a procedure to close a tiny hole in his heart that caused his stroke. His focus then turned to rehab. I wasn't too worried about my left arm or my left leg because I figured I have experience with injuries, knee injuries or shoulder injuries or something like that. It was just, I work on this. How do you rehabilitate an eye? You know, the both left sides of your eye, I don't, you can't do that, you just hope. You just hope and uh, I think later on they told me only 20% of people um, after a stroke regain their vision. That's the toughest That's thing. That's all? Yeah. My, well that must have been kind of discouraging yeah. when you hear something like they that. They didn't tell me that. <laughs> they didn't tell you that? I just learned this recently. <laughs> Yeah, but then your vision gradually started. It did. The test that I cho I used was um, my third son Dante was born January third, so um, my wife had a clock up on our dresser for you know midnight feedings. You got to take care of the kids, change the diapers, and things like that. Where a clock and you would read maybe twelve twenty three, I would see two twenty three. A month or two would go by, and all of a sudden I'd see the bottom of that one. You know, and I'd, I'd, I'd start to start to get encouraged that it was coming back. All of a sudden, I'd see the top of that one, and I'd see it was 12:23. I'll never forget it. Yeah, there was that moment where he said, "Babe, I can see the one," and just elation. I mean, we were both so ecstatic. But there's still a little bit left. To the left of that one, there's a little battery symbol that says you need to put a battery in your clock in case the power goes out. You know, so it, so the alarm still worked. I could see that battery symbol. That's a very symbolic, it's almost like yeah. the battery in the clock and the battery in your body starting to yeah. come back. I, lay, I was laying up at night, I just woke up and I looked and I saw that little symbol and I sort of, my wife was asleep and I sort of smiled and I said, I think it's gonna be all right. On June 12th, Teddy and Heidi Bruski joined the rest of the Patriots at team owner Robert Kraft's home for a Super Bowl ring ceremony. Just being there with his teammates and all of our friends was a high. Then remember and, and reminisce about everything that he was a part of and, and the ring. It was a fabulous night. Whenever you can look at something and you can feel what it felt like for a year of your life, it's special. I look at this third one, I hear the crowd, I smell the grass. <laughs> I feel the pain that I went through. I feel the joy of every victory. <sighs> Everything is encapsulated in this ring when I look at it. Ruski was still a long way from playing football. But by the end of the night, he was leading his team again. As his recovery progressed, then we started talking more seriously about, you know, I could do this. As it went along, it was like, okay, it looks like I'm going to be able to do this, so, okay, so let's just rehab this year and, and come back next year. I said, well, I think, I think you could, but then as time went on, he really made a believer out of me. 
he had to win you over. Oh, yeah. He, he was lobbying pretty hard for a while. I just kept getting better and better. It is now with great pride that I present your third Super Bowl championship. I remember the opener. I was a little emotional watching him be on the sideline. It was hard for him. Brewski celebrated the past with his teammates, but he was also dreaming of a future when he could play again. There was a moment we went out to breakfast in early September, six months out of his heart procedure. And he said, you know, we're coming up on whatever week of the season it is, and I really think I could do it this year. And that was something that we hadn't discussed until that morning at breakfast. And so he made a believer out of me. I was definitely on board by that point because I wasn't worried about his health at all. Now, when you made that decision, there must have been someone, a close friend, someone in your family that said, look to you now and say, Teddy, what are you, nuts? What, what are you going after? What are you going to do? Why are you going to do this? What risk? You've, you've been all pro. You've won the Super Bowls. Why, you're 32. Why go back? Why do it? Yeah, I had a, had a conversation with my father-in-law on the phone, and he told me, Teddy, what else do you have to prove? That hit home with me a little bit, and I thought about it. It is the unknown. It was the unknown for me, and I asked my doctor. I said, Doc, is there anyone you can, you can sort of tell me about that I can sort of draw an example from? He says, Teddy, you'd be the first. And with that comes a lot. With that comes fear, not knowing what was going to happen in my first hit. You know, my first game, the first time that I'm under a pile and Richard Seymour lands on me, you know, <laughs> am I going to be able to get up? What words of advice did, did Mr. Kraft give you? I told him I wanted to play again. And he looked at me like, Teddy, are you crazy? Yeah. I'll never forget it. Measure nine times and cut once. <laughs> That's what Mr. Kraft said? That's what he told me. I said, what's that mean? <laughs> and he said, I want you to see this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, and this guy. You know, let's, let's make sure. That's basically what it means, to make sure before you go ahead and go into something that's so important that, that possibly can be dangerous. So uh, measure nine times and cut once. I had him put it on an 8 by 10 for me. I'm going to frame it up and put it in my office, too. <laughs> In a way, though, isn't this also sending a message to your kids? That's been a big sort of point for me to try to get across to people why I'm doing this, too. I want to raise my sons to where they realize that no matter what they face in life, they can overcome it. How am I supposed to teach them this if I don't live my life this way? It'd eat me up if I didn't give it a shot. So I'm going out there and I'm going to give it my best shot. On October 19th, Bruski participated in his first practice. There you go. Bang right. Teddy, just uh, your immediate reaction to coming off the field for the first time, first uh, practice in over eight months. Had a good amount of nerves. You know, it's, uh, you haven't done something in a long time, and you always have some, t some nerves the first time back. I was still seeing things right. You know, I was getting my reads. You know, pretty much every snap, I had a, the right read I should have had for that offensive play. Being in pads again was therapeutic for Brewski. A weight had been lifted. But there would be a burden to carry into his first game on October 30th. In essence, what you're explaining to me is it's not only for yourself, all the people that have had strokes, this is a message to your kids. I mean, you talk about playing under pressure. Yeah. <laughs> what were you yeah. feeling before the game against Buffalo? There was two weeks leading up to the game in Buffalo, too, because we had a bye. I had a chance to hear it all. All the supporters, I had a chance to hear all the critics. Everyone thinking I should, everyone think I shouldn't. I don't know if I anticipated so much mixed emotions with me coming back, with people worrying about me. Because when people think about the Super Bowl, they see me running with my kids. You know, they don't remember you know, the interception or the plays that I made in the Super Bowl. It was like, that was a great Super Bowl. That shot with you and your kids, that was great. You know, it's like, you, you remember we won the game, right? <laughs> we won the game too, you know, world champs. That's, I think that's what people remember. So all of a sudden, I am taking a little bit of risk, a risk, of risk by coming back. So they express genuine concern because they see me as a family man first and foremost, and that's who I am. But they were concerned about me. Yeah, I said, go Pats. Go Pats. Yes. They say, what else does he need to do? Just, just move on. Well, that, move on to what? That's, my life right now is playing football. I want to get back to it. And so right before that game, it's, it's just that I made it. I went through all the tough stuff already. This is why I did all that tough stuff. How are you doing, y'all? All I have to do now is play, and that's the easy part. We're going out together. We're going out together. Come on. Oh, it ain't Communicate, play hard, have fun, energy, all right? 
defense, all three. One, two, three, defense. Can you remember what you felt like when you were introduced and you ran out onto the field? Yeah, it was uh, just the reception from the reception. I don't, I didn't know. I didn't know what to expect. just an ovation that I've never had before. It made me feel good that, okay, Teddy, everybody's here, they're cheering for you. All right, let's go make some tackles. In his first series, Roosty showed that his instincts were as sharp as ever. He sniffed out a reverse. And most importantly for his wife, popped right back up, ready for another play. I know in the first game there was the five second rule, which we've joked about for years, but in that first game back, if you're not up after five seconds, I'm going to be down there on the sideline and it's going to be horribly embarrassing for you. So, you know, he definitely made an effort in that Buffalo game to get up quickly, which was kind of him because it just really helps a lot. on that win. I'm going to break this one down. Let's go, everybody up. All right. And I want to know how we feel about having Teddy Bruschi back. What we were talking about is that you've become a role model. Who's your role model? Who's my role model? My wife. <laughs> She's my hero, she's my role model because she's who I got my strength from. It's important for everyone who goes through adversity to have someone that they can lean on and they can talk to, and she's been that one for me. I think it's amazing that he thinks so highly of me, but truthfully I think there were times when he reassured me more than I did him. From day one, when they came in and the doctor said, you've had a mild stroke, I remember from that very moment him saying, what do I need to do now? Where do we go from here? What happens next? What's the next step? And I was really impressed that he never said, why me? I mean, I think I even went through times when I said, why did this happen to us? And, you know, look at all that's been taken away. But, you know, when, there, when he was weak, I was strong and vice versa because he absolutely did not spend one minute on self-pity, which was and still is impressive to me. You coming back to says something about the game of football, don't you think? It says something about what is it about this game that yeah. would draw someone back to play? Did you ever see Apocalypse Now? And there's a scene where Martin Sheen is sitting there and he's in the jungle and, he, and he's taking fire and he's getting shot at yeah. and he looks over to the soldier that's next to him and he says, you know, he says, you'll never find out about yourself like this working in some desk in Cleveland. Right, right. And it almost is sort of the same thing about about playing football, there's a, a clarity or a vividness that, that you can't find any place else in life. Yeah. And it has to be something like that that brings you back, that makes you want to play the game. I respect this game so much, and I'll tell you why, because football has taught me everything in life that I know. It's taught me about the most valuable lessons in life, about being unselfish, about teamwork, about hard work, about discipline, about loving your family, loving your teammates. He is passionate in his life about everything that he does. He adores it, he adores the camaraderie. Everything from practice to being in the locker room and traveling with the guys on the plane, I mean, it means a lot to him. He just wasn't ready to give it up. I wanted to get back to living my life. My life happened to be playing professional football. And to tell you the truth, I wasn't gonna let this beat me. I wasn't gonna let stroke take away my life from me. And it took a lot more work to get back to that because of what football involves. But it was something that I, I wasn't gonna fail doing.
Welcome back. Thanks. And I know it's good to be out there. Good to see you out there. I know every time I walk off that field, I mean, win or lose, it's a victory. I know I want to win every game, don't get me wrong, <laughs> don't get me wrong, so when we lose I feel bad, but I mean I realize in the back of my head what I'm doing, every stroke survivor, past, present and in the future will, will be able to look at this and, and I'm proud of that. We talk about the journey and the journey has been, it's been tough, I've, ha I've had to deal with a lot to be where I am today. I can't express to you the amount of joy that I have every time I play now every tackle that I make, every time that I look to one of my teammates and we're smiling because we did something successful. I had fun playing before, but the way that I'm feeling now, just how fortunate I feel that I am to be playing that game out there with my teammates, you can't measure it.